issue facing our nation isn't how old we are, it's how old are our ideas. Now at six, we verify claims made by the president during the State of the Union address and the Republican response. You put six bullets in his body, correct? Yes, I understand that. You put two in his forehead. We are hours away from closing arguments as a man is charged with killing his ex-girlfriend's fiance. The shocking audio played in court. Plus, the big cat prowling in Oceanside. You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 6. Welcome to your Friday, everyone. 6 a.m. here. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nada Irampour. So glad you're joining us here. And we're going to start this hour with your forecast. It's Friday after all. What's the weekend looking like after we got some rain in yeah. the last couple of days? Oh, nice enough to wet the ground, mm. you know, dampen the ground. In some cases, it was a little heavy for <laughs> yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, but Thursday was mostly just kind of the scattered sporadic stuff that was left over. Now as we head through your Friday, we're dry again. We're going to stay dry all the way into the upcoming weekend. And in fact, over the course of Saturday and Sunday, those temperatures are going to warm up pretty nicely. So take a look at the forecast for today. Mid 60s along the coast. Low 70s are going to be possible inland, but we'll mostly stay in the upper 60s out there. So far, satellite radar showing that we are dry and the sun starting to come out across San Diego. We've got another about six minutes before sunrise technically, but you can see how plenty of light is coming through showing what a beautiful day it's going to be coming up. We'll talk about our next chance for rain in the forecast going to stay pretty low throughout the next week or so. So that's a little uh, precursor before we get there. Back to you. Not since President Lincoln and the Civil War have freedom and democracy been under assault at home as they are today. What's happened now is a horror show. President Biden just doesn't get it. Well, this morning we are now looking into claims made by the president in his State of the Union address and the Republican response. Our Verify team spent the night checking what claims are true and what's false. Here's Casey Decker. President Biden just gave his third State of the Union address. He boasted about a strong economy and repeatedly warned about threats to democracy. The Verify team was watching closely to fact check the claims in his speech, as well as in the Republican rebuttal from Senator Katie Britt. First, on the economy. Inflation has dropped from 9% to 3%, the lowest in the world. It's true that inflation peaked at 9% in June of 2022 and has since fallen to 3%. That is lower than in much of the world. For instance, in the UK, inflation remains above 4%. But his claim that it's the lowest in the world is false. Several countries have lower inflation rates. For example, Canada's is below 3%. Biden also talked about the domestic threat to democracy posed by the January 6th attacks and the foreign threat posed by Russia and Vladimir Putin. In both cases, the president took aim at former President Donald Trump. Former Republican president tells Putin, quote, do whatever the hell you want. That's true. Last month, in a campaign rally, Trump claimed that when he was president, the leader of a NATO member country asked him what he would do if that country didn't fulfill its financial obligations to the alliance. Trump said that he told this leader not only would the U.S. not protect such a country from Russian attack, but that he would encourage the Russians to, quote, do whatever the hell they want. The Republican rebuttal largely focused on the issue of immigration. Alabama Senator Katie Britt accused Biden of facilitating a crisis at the border. Minutes after taking office, he suspended all deportations. On the day he was inaugurated, Biden's acting Secretary of Homeland Security issued a memo ordering a broad review of immigration enforcement policy. It included a 100-day pause on certain deportations. But Britt's claim that all deportations were suspended is misleading. The memo specifically outlined several exceptions, including for threats to national security. For more fact-checking of the claims from the president's address and the Republican rebuttal, go to verifythis.com. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal that was the president's response to Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene over the killing of young Georgia woman allegedly by a suspect who illegally entered the U.S. from Venezuela. Greene wore a shirt reading, Say Her Name. But some were upset with Biden's use of the term illegal instead of undocumented. 
Congresswoman Delia Ramirez posted on social media saying, quote, no human being is illegal. This large group of protesters calling for a ceasefire now between Israel and Hamas. They stopped traffic in our nation's capital ahead of the president's address. During the speech, the president announced plans to build a temporary port to get more humanitarian aid into Gaza, and he pledged to bring home Israeli hostages taken by Hamas. Turning to local news here, in just about three hours, attorneys will present their closing arguments in the trial for a man charged with gunning down his ex-girlfriend's fiance. Jesse Milton Alvarez is accused of killing Mario Fierro, a cathedral Catholic high school teacher in 2021. CBS 8's Regina Yorita live downtown now with what the defendant said during his cross-examination here. Regina? Yeah, good morning, Eric and Netta. That is correct. The defendant is back in court today and this morning for closing arguments. Now, from what we heard yesterday, it seems Jesse Alvarez is sticking to his case that uh, the incident was a self-defense, but prosecutors say uh, that is not the case. In fact, they actually played an audio recording moments he fired six gunshots. Now, what you're about to hear, I should warn you, it might be disturbing for some of our viewers. That was you, right? Mr. Alvarez? That was you pulling the trigger, correct? That was me screaming and him pulling the trigger on the first shot, yes. You were the one who killed Mr. Fierro, right? Yes, I've testified to that. You put six bullets in his body, correct? Yes, I understand that. You put two in his forehead, right? Yes. And you put two in the back of his head, right? Yes. And you also shot him in the back, right? Right. Now, you even researched how to get away with killing someone, including looking up California self-defense laws. Right? Right. Now, Mr. Alvarez, will you remind us, what defense are you going with in this case? Of course, self-defense. And so that was the audio recording of the gunshots prosecutors played yesterday. Now, Jesse Alvarez testified it was self-defense. He told the jury he just wanted to talk to his ex-girlfriend's fiance on the morning he showed up at his North Park home in 2021 while carrying a gun. So back out here, prosecutors as well as the defendant will be back in court this morning for closing arguments. At the end of the day, it should go to the jury and the jury will have to decide what goes of this case. Eric Anetta. Wow. All right. Thanks, Regina, for that. And now this morning, some San Diego Unified employees facing layoffs could be notified as soon as today. This after the district school board approved major layoffs on Tuesday, all to help close the $94 million funding gap. More than 400 employees could be impacted by this, and the layoffs include teachers, administrators, school bus drivers. The district says the layoffs will be based on seniority and credential types, so whoever's been there uh, the least amount of time. By the way, the layoff official notice is expected to be mailed out next week. This morning, a group of thieves being tied to more burglaries in Mira Mesa. Police now say these guys are connected to 11 crimes. And in all of the cases, the suspects have been entering through rear sliding glass doors. Police say the thieves appear to target mostly corner houses. Authorities say at least three or as many as five young men have been involved in these. You're asked to call police if you know anything. And this morning, we are getting a better look at a mountain lion that was seen looking around Oceanside. You're just roaming the streets. That big cat spotted several times downtown. Oceanside police released these videos to CBS 8 of the mountain lion walking near the Civic Center area and then crossing the street to Regal Cinemas. Maybe check out a show. There was also an unconfirmed sighting in the Rancho Del Oro neighborhood, which might mean it's heading back to where it belongs. If you see a mountain lion, by the way, remember, do not run. Instead, face the animal, make noise, make yourself look big, and then slowly walk away.
Let's check in with Evan here. That's wow. a big cat. Big cat. City slicker say. here. Rebel. Kinda unmistakable <laughs> out there. <laughs> Compared to that mountain lion. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Okay. I feel like, I mean, I know you're supposed to make yourself big, but like, I would just freak out in a moment. Run <laughs> as fast as you can. Ooh, okay. Uh, 609, just about to hit 610, and we are looking at a beautiful day out across San Diego County. Beautiful weekend as well. Saturday, Sunday temperatures are going to boost by a few degrees. Take us to the above average range for the first time in quite a while. Sunrise was three minutes ago and sunset coming at 552 PM. Remember, we're going to swing those clocks forward an hour. That'll adjust those sunrise and sunset times. Saturday and Sunday temperatures are going to climb by a bit. So a beautiful weekend ahead, mild and dry into the early portion of next week. Temperatures will take a little bit of a slide, so they'll start to drop down a bit. But the thing is, even with the troughs of low pressure coming through next week, we're not expecting any rain. We are looking at, however, uh, dropping those temperatures and increasing cloud cover at times. You can see partly cloudy to maybe mostly cloudy skies guys, but our rain chances stay low. So between now and the later portion of next week, we're really not looking at anything too great coming our way in terms of our probability of precipitation. That could be a good thing considering we have seen plenty of rain so far since the new year, since the water year began in October. So we're not doing bad as far as our uh, rain totals go. We could use this notable break out there because we've lost a lot of the clouds that we had over the last couple mornings. We are starting off the day in a colder range. So Temperatures are mostly in the 30s the farther east you go. Alpine, Campo, Ramona, Palomar Mountain, all in the 30s. Mostly in the 40s inland and then along the coastline. Upper 40s, couple low 50s, like downtown San Diego at 52. Carlsbad at 49. Fallbrook is at 45 degrees right now. And we've got a Poway at 46. This afternoon, 60s come about. Tomorrow, Saturday, as well as Sunday, partly cloudy skies with temperatures in the upper 60s and even some low 70s out there. Let's check in on traffic, see how your roads are here at 611. So far, things have been pretty quiet out there, but we just saw a crash pop up that is starting to cause some delays on the Coronado Bridge. Uh, it's a crash on First Street, uh, so we're seeing a little bit of a slowing speeds on the bridge itself. Looks like another crash just popped up, and this actually may be the one that's causing more of those delays, uh, the one on the right-hand side there. So expect uh, stop-and-go traffic over the Coronado Bridge this morning, but besides that, we're not looking too bad in the greater picture. A lot of green out there. Let's look at border wait times, see how they are as we start off your Friday morning, San Ysidro Port of Entry, almost two hours it's going to take you. Our fifth, or excuse me, 115 minutes in total. Otay Mesa Port of Entry is going to be about an hour and a half. That's running at about 90 minutes right now. Back to you. Good to know. Thank you, Evan. Still ahead here, why more migrants may be drowning right off of San Diego's coast. Plus, more plane parts falling off midair. What happened this time that was caught on camera? And we spring forward this weekend. We'll tell you the impact on our health.